In this video, we're going to show you how to do a narrow roll hem. This is a hem traditionally used for skirts or dresses, and it finishes about a quarter inch wide. Let's start with cutting the dress. We're laying out the dress so that we can cut it. In this case, we're actually just trimming up over the front across her feet and then merging off in the sides because she has a nice little baby train. So I'm going to take my side seams together and lay out the dress like this. So I'm looking at what's been pinned up. It's already been pinned to fit on the person. We're going to take our I like to use the blue water soluble marker in this case, and we're marking the edge where the hem will actually finish. So the pins are just holding the fabric up for when we were fitting this garment on the person. Now, this edge down here that it's holding in place, that the pins are holding in place, that is actually where the new hem will be. So I am marking that so that I can take out my pins and we can prep this out flat so that we can cut it. Here, we don't want this really, see how it's pinned and it's kind of severe coming down? We don't actually want it to stay like that. So as I take this pin out, I'm gonna work this down. So see how we're merging this line down? You can see my blue marks here. I don't like to draw a heavy line because I don't like to um, get that blue marker everywhere. I like to use the dots like that. So. Let's flip and go to our other side. And again, you can see the backs of the pins here, and we are marking the edge of that crease that it's holding in place. The fold that it's holding in place is the actual new hem length. So we've taken out the pins, and now we're ready to line up for the cut. Uh, I like to, like I said, put the side seams together. I'm going to Put a weight here. Now, you see how this back of the fabric, this is the back of the dress. It doesn't matter if that's flat. That doesn't matter to us right now because we're not cutting that. What matters is beginning at our blue marks forward. And I'm gonna grab one of my weights to hold that in place up here. And another for what will be the center front. I'm twisting it so that I can get it all on the table here. And let me make, I'm gonna darken my blue marks so that you can see those a little bit better. The shiny fabric makes it a little bit tricky to see. Now that I have this all laid out, I'm gonna measure my blue marks. Sometimes when we're pinning, it's not exact. The person is moving, the garment is moving. Once we get it up on the table flat, that's when we really want to make sure that all of our measurements are equal and balanced and they make sense. So again, all these edges need to be right on top of each other. And I will even pin those together if I find that they're not wanting to stay put. But we're going to keep weights and pins free of our cut line. Now we've got one last step before we cut to make this cut section when it's rolled look exactly the same as the seam that it's merging into, I like to open the seam allowance and flatten that out. So we're gonna go and pull a few of these stitches. See that? Great. And unroll that. And again, you can press this out if it's easier, but you'll see why I wanted to do that when we make the cut. So we re released the original seam right here at the point where our blade is going to come off as we're cutting. And that's so that when we finish this edge later, we'll be able to roll it back in so that it looks totally continuous with the seam that's already there. All right. We are finally ready to cut. So we're gonna make a few last checks, which is, do our side seams match up? Good. Just wanna reset anything that isn't totally flat or straight. Great. And that's good, that's good. Remember, this doesn't matter back here because we're not cutting it, so that's okay. And all we need is for the area that we're cutting 
to be flat. The rest of this is okay, that's fine. And then one more check to make sure that this is in fact our center front. And as I tr watch it travel up, I know that it is. All right, great. Now, on a curved edge like this, and dresses often are curved, we use the ruler to measure, but when I'm actually cutting, I'm trusting my marks. So remember, you have marked your first line, which is the new hemline, and you've marked a half an inch to three quarters of an inch down for your hem allowance. So remember, you need to cut on that lower line, the line that is closer to the hem that's there to give you that room. Um, I'm gonna give myself one single more mark. So remember it was two inches and then a half an inch down right on my fold so that I know I'm starting at the right spot. And then I'm looking ahead. I'm looking for my end point. So I'm both watching myself cut as I'm cutting because I want to make sure that that curve again is natural. We're not religiously sticking to the marks. We don't want it to be wobbly. We want to do measurement and visual aesthetic, a, a blend of both, okay? So let's do it. Can't go back now. And I'm looking ahead and I'm aiming for those marks. And then I'm shooting for the edge that I released. You see, quick tip. As I'm cutting this silk dress, I'm realizing I really need a new rotary blade. So I've got, I like 60 millimeter. That's my favorite size because we can cover a lot of ground. It isn't good in tight corners, but it is good for a lot of cutting space. Um, so I've got my little new blade in the pack here. Remember your cutting gloves. I'm telling you, don't touch this thing without it. Whew. Now, I'm gonna unscrew this is a Fisker. It's got a nice safety right here that I really like. We'll go through that later. But dump that guy. <laughs> Clean the lint off. This is good to do even when you're not changing the blade because you really can get a lot of lint buildup from all of the cutting. Then we're going to grab our new guy and hold him on there and just put our blade back on. Now, I believe that these can go left-handed or right-handed. You can actually put the blade and the screw on either side of this plate. So that's kind of handy and nice as well. All right, we're gonna tighten that up. That's great. And we are ready to cut. Okay. We've got our fresh new blade on. So now we are really Cut and smooth. Yes, perfect. All right, we're ready to turn it up. Let's go over to the machine. We're over at the machine here now, and I've got my little scrap that we cut off earlier. I really like to keep the scraps every time I cut because I wanna test the machine every time I sit down with the, the specific fabric that we're using. In this case, this kind of silky satin. Now, there are three different ways I'm sure there are a million different ways. Three different ways that I have used to narrow roll a hem. Let's go back. What is a narrow roll? It means we are rolling the fabric, teeny tiny, narrow, you might say. And there are a few ways to do this. I will tell you my preference after I show them to you. So right now we have a regular foot on the machine, just a standard straight stitch foot. And let me pull through my new color here. Perfect. And great, okay. So I've got my matching color in the machine. It's really important to have a matching color thread for this one as you will see this top stitching from the outside. We're gonna start with the flat out turn all at once. What I mean by that is we're starting with a standard foot, regular, um, not wide, not narrow, just a, a traditional straight stitch foot. I have placed one, two rolls in this fabric and placed it under the presser foot. The presser foot right now is holding that in place at my initial roll. And then I am just using my fingers 
to complete it. You see that? I'm using this finger to tuck that edge under, this finger to roll it, and these fingers to hold it in place. So this is really a movement all at once that you get used to making. You see? Now, this hand is very important for a couple of reasons. After I roll this like that, I'm using this thumb and this hand to hold it in place as it's feeding into the machine, but I'm also using these fingers at the back to guide this piece of fabric. I personally think this is one of the most important things about the narrow roll. If you don't use the left hand back here to guide it out of the machine, you are not gonna get this crisp fold. And the reason is this, almost never is this material going to be cut straight. We aren't often cutting straight seams. We're cutting curved edges of skirts and dresses and pants. And so you really need a guide, not only going in this finger, but a guide coming out the back, helping that fabric continue on its curved path because it doesn't live a straight life like that. It lives a, a curved, wonderful, exciting life. And we don't wanna force it to go through the machine in an angle that it isn't actually cut at. Let me cut in here really quick because I really wanna reiterate this idea of where the hands are being placed. It's really important to this technique that we've got both a hand feeding in and the motion of turning the fabric under, but this left hand guiding the fabric out the back of the machine as well. So we have a guide going in and a guide going out. That is the key to this technique, is support all the way through. Okay, back to the video. You see? So we're just continuing to feed. Now we're coming up to a seam here. And so we're gonna have to work extra hard to tuck that under. And I will tell you with this small scrap that I'm using, not ideal. So we're gonna stop right there so that we don't use all of our scrap. But this, this top row, that's me. This bottom row, that's the factory. So pretty good, pretty close. Option number two. This is fold, sew, fold, so, this one is really good for very tight, curved sections because it's really hard to force it into that double fold right out the gate. Now, as you remember, we've left a half an inch seam allowance, so we can't turn it over more than a quarter of an inch on each roll for our double roll. So, we're literally just, all of our fingers are in the same place, holding everything into position, and we're just straight stitching that down then, after we've done that, we're gonna roll it again. Now, you might be wondering, won't that leave two lines of stitching? And you're right, it does. Now, what I will say is, you won't see it. It's on the inside. The only thing that you'll be able to see from the outside of the garment is this second line of stitching that we're putting in right now. And again, my fingers are all in the same place, guiding in, guiding out, and generally helping this fold stay in place as we move. The truth is, you can pin these in place. I know you're wondering, why aren't you using straight pins? Well, because you could spend your life trying to straight pin this in place, and I promise you, it will just take longer and it won't help. So save yourself the frustration, go with the flow, feel it, get into the groove, and just freehand this baby because the better that you get at feeling when something is right, the more enjoyable and less frustrating it will be. And in this case, this is definitely one of those situations. Ready for option number three. For the third option, we have some really cool feet. Now, it's up to you whether you like to have an attachment for this, but if you do and you're definitely interested in looking at new feet, these little roll hem feet are really interesting. So let me walk you through this. You've got what we call a pigtail, which is this kind of swirl in here. And then you have a little post inside of that swirl. Can you see that? This allows the fabric to be flipped as it feeds through the machine. 
There's a couple of different sizes of these. This is for my industrial, of course, so you can also get these on snap and feet. But this is a wider uh, one quarter inch turn. This is a three sixteenths. And then we've got a really cute little baby that's a whole little one eighth. This is only gonna work on a really thin fabric like chiffon. So work up to this one. So we switched the foot on the machine. Now we're all loaded up with this new guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a single fold, place that under the presser foot, and then I'm going to lower my needle using the hand wheel. And now I'm going to lift the presser foot and use this fold that I'm holding to feed into the swirl. This will make more sense as we start to roll. So start this in an inconspicuous area so that if this is a little bumpy when you're getting started, that's okay. We're gonna start moving forward. I would not worry about backstitching when I'm using this because typically you're going in around anyway, but we'll get back to that later. So now I am trying to get this to start good. You see how the fabric is, I, am, I like to feed a slight roll into it but as it goes, oh, I have my little tail caught there. As it goes, it's flipping itself the rest of the way. Now, option three right now, this is the most important feed out the back situation. This hand is really important because it really needs that guide coming out, the left hand really needs to guide it coming out the back of the machine as it's feeding through this foot because it's going through that little swirl onto that post. This is really nice. I will tell you that for those that have maybe a little soreness in the hands, maybe arthritis even, this, help, this foot helps a lot with that because there's a lot less um, pinching and pressure. It helps a lot keep that really uniform fold. Doesn't that look lovely? So again, Top bar here, that's what we just did with this foot. Bottom, that's our from the factory. So, man, that looks good. I really like that. All of these options are great. Try them all out. Feel free to mix and match. Different sections of the dress, depending on the grain or the drape or how long a line you're running, can be great. I like to use the foot when I'm doing really long lines, maybe on a long wedding dress with very little curve. But when I'm in a tight spot, I really need to do that single fold stitch, single fold stitch to get that nice hard curve. All of the options are great. Try them all out, see what you like best. But now you have a full arsenal for this one scale. We've moved back to the dress. Now that we've tried out all of our options and used our scrap, we're ready to get to the main show. As you can see, we're starting here where the stitching that we've left, this stitching is fine and goes back through the train. And this is our cut edge. We're gonna give ourselves a little roll here. One, two, making sure it's not more than a half an inch wide. So a quarter and a quarter. And then we're placing that under our presser foot and we're gonna begin. So I am gonna give myself a little back stitch there, just a few stitches. Remember, this is usually delicate material and we don't want it to be very obvious that we started and we have pre-existing seam and new seam. We want it to be seamless as much as we can. And then again, as I'm moving into the curve, I'm using those fingers to smooth. We can see our blue marks coming up from when we marked earlier, which means we know that we're in the right spot. And we are gonna press and trim any frayed edges later. So try to make this as continuous as possible. I really try to sew this entire seam without stopping because it looks like it. When, the, when it's finished, it will look like it was continuous if we don't have a bunch of start and stop overlapping reverse stitching. Now we're coming up to our seam here, our first seam. So I'm gonna be careful to tuck that in. However, let's stop right there real quick. You can stitch this down. No reverse stitch, just a quick baste. I'm gonna do that on my other side too, actually. There we go. So that when we get to that later, we won't have to stop and that'll already have 
a little tack in place, you won't be able to see that tack. And then we're just gonna line up our stitching again and try to get that little bit of back stitching as we start again on top of the previous so it's not very obvious. Again, a good matching color thread will help cover that as well. So I'm trying not to get too bumpy here. As we get close to that seam, it gets a little thick, but that's okay. We're gonna press that and keep rolling with it. And we're getting into our curve now, so I'm using my left hand and I'm really helping the fabric come out the back and pulling off to the left. Really, I am guiding it off to the left here so that it's being stitched the way that it is cut, okay? And notice that I'm really sewing in small spurts. I'm stopping, but I'm not finishing. I'm not taking the needle away or cutting the thread. It's okay to move slow. Slow is fast in this case. What do they say in the army? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah, Garrison knows. And I'm getting as close to that folded edge with my stitching as I can without letting the raw edge pop out. There we go. Perfect. And we are just coming straight across the front right now, so it's really important that we try not to stop because this part is right in front of her feet. If we have to do any reverse stitching right here, that's gonna be really obvious. And again, as you're watching it come out the back, don't worry if it's a little bit bumpy. We're gonna press that later and it is going to press out really well. We also have to still spray it with water to remove those blue marks. So we have a little more to go in finishing. Right now, we are just trying to get a nice even fold, a smooth stitch, and no raw edges popping up. That is all we're trying to do and it gets better the further that we go. As we get into the rhythm, as we keep moving, that's another really important part about this stitch. Keep moving, keep trying. Don't get frustrated and stop. Try to keep going. You will feel it. You will get into the rhythm. See, right there? You can use a seam ripper. I don't like to use my tweezers. Kind of get that underneath. If I'm having trouble getting it under with my finger, I'll use a seam ripper and kind of use that sharp edge or tweezers, whatever. Great. We are almost coming up to our side seam again. Ooh. But again, you see that left hand moving out like that? Not only am I moving it and guiding it off to the left, but I'm kind of smoothing the fabric to keep my surface area, immediate surface area, smooth and flat. That just helps me stay organized, helps me keep everything else smooth. All righty. As we're coming up to this seam here, I'm using my fingers and roll, roll, and then using my fingernail. Boy, this, I will tell you what, takes practice. Even I feel like a beginner sometimes when I'm doing this. So really, keep trying, keep trying, move slow. And as we are curving down to meet what will become the baby train, that's where the curve gets tight. Across the feet, it's usually straighter. You won't have as much trouble there. Here, where the curve is getting tight, that's where I'm using my hands a lot and needing like a sharp edge underneath there. I've got my seam ripper here um, because I am having a little bit of trouble getting this edge to turn. I could switch at this point and go to a single roll stitch, but I think I can make it. I'm just gonna go really slow and really use that back hand to pull it into that curve. And I can use my seam ripper to help me tuck. I like to use the seam ripper as I get closer to the foot because even though I have a finger guard here, I really don't want to get my fingers that close. And 
though it's not good for the machine if it were to hit the seam ripper, it's safer than my finger. So if I really need to get my hand in there closer than I'm comfortable with, that's when I like to use that edge. So you see over here, you see how that's a little bit bumpy there because it was that tight curve? That's okay, we're gonna press that out later. And now, dun -da -da -da, we are back to our original hem on the other side, getting feeding back into that train. So we are almost there. Yay, yay, yay! Here we go. And I'm trying to hit that stitching so that my back stitching is directly on top of that. As you can see, we didn't have a perfect color match, but this sure isn't bad. That's not bad at all. Now we're ready to finish this up and head over to our iron. Last bit, and this is an important one. After we've got our stitching in, we need to come back and just clean it up, finish it up, make it look nice. So I'm going to trim any threads. I'm also gonna trim any, if any of that raw edge frayed while we were moving it. I wanna clean that up and just trim those out. Good, good, good. And then we've got our blue marks from marking where we were gonna cut. And I like to spray those before the iron because the iron helps to dry those. So I'm just going along this edge anywhere that I see blue marks and using my handy water bottle to spray those. I'm also using this opportunity to look and see if there's any other, any area that didn't get sewed properly that had a little raw edge slip out and just kind of examining it. But I think we are ready to iron. So I wanna show you this one last time, again, just to emphasize, before we have ironed it, it doesn't lay flat, okay? It is curved and kind of wrinkled. That's because we have forced this fabric into a new position and we need to retrain it using the iron. So I'm gonna start at stitching that was already there. Doesn't matter where you start really. And we're just gonna start really giving it a good press. Heavy steam on this one, it's gonna need it. And you'll notice I'm pressing from the inside. Um, I really like in any case that's possible to press from the inside, just in case there's any kind of change in fabric texture on the outside. We're protecting it just that little bit by pressing it from the inside instead of the outside. You can of course test if you're not sure if you can press the fabric for some reason, you're worried, use the scrap, press that first, find out if it changes the color, texture, anything like that. Those scraps that you cut off, they're so important. I always keep the scraps until I am totally done with the alteration for any reason, stitching, ironing. Great, that's awesome, perfect. So it's a little wet, we're gonna let it hang dry. But as you can see, we are totally flat now. We got that good matching stitch color thread. Boy, beautiful. Dun, 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 dun. Can't see where we start, where we finish. That's what we like. Looks like we've never been here. We have got tons of tips and tricks like this on our YouTube channel. So take a look at all of our other videos, like, subscribe, share, and we will see you at the next video.